Well, with the laser active repair videos somewhat done now, and after doing a bunch of research, I'm really worried about the capacitors in my packs. Now you can see I have three S10 packs and one N1 pack here. Uh, the N1 is the uh, PC engine pack. Very rare, very expensive. Um, the S1 is the Mega Drive version. And then there's the N10, which is the TG16 pack. And I've only ever had one of those, I think. And it was complete, like new in the box, even. And I sold it probably three, three and a half years ago for like $650. And I do believe I, if I still had it today, I could probably sell it for close to twice that now. I mean, these, I mean, they're just incredibly rare, you know, and with capacitors going bad, I, you know, I, I kind of think that maybe um, people are just tossing them, you know, just don't think that they're repairable or whatever, and that sucks. So I'm going to dig in and hopefully not find leaking capacitors eating away all the traces because it's very common. Um, I think there is a, you can test from five volt to ground for shorts because I guess, I, I guess like most of the capacitors in these are just py power bypass caps. So if you have a short from five volt to ground, you know, one of those caps has shorted out and I hope I don't find that obviously, but I'm, I, you know, I have my, um, my tweezer set up now so I can actually remove caps pretty easily uh, as long as they're not too dirty. Uh, and I'm going to replace them with uh, ceramic capacitors. I'm not going to put more electrolytic capacitors in here, mostly because they are just power, power bypass. And I've been doing it on the Turbo Duo for quite a while now. It's been a year and a half or two years now that I've been doing that. Um, again, shout out to the Steve for suggesting that in the, in the first place a long time ago. It is way faster and way easier. And then you don't have to worry about electrolytic fluid, fluid coming out of the caps and eating traces again. So, you know, it's uh, kind of somewhat future-proofed after that. So let's open up one of these and see what we see. All right, so I'm, I'm most worried about my N1 pack and something rare that still exists on this thing, which you never find these, is the rear port cover. I mean, it's just a stupid piece of plastic, but incredibly rare I'm sure so it's just um, security bits and I believe these are the normal four and a half millimeter ones well I think I lucked out if I see if I'm actually seeing any leakage the only damage that's done so far is just kinda discolor the solder and the hell that might even just be flux oh there's a really badly leaked one right there let's get a close-up on that one so you can actually see the fluid that has leaked see that shininess it's actually leaked out and if I go to this area that's about the only other area that I see that's got some discolored parts what I mean by that is just the the leg right there you can kind of scrape away yeah some of it scraped away so it's almost like there was just a little bit of, of fluid that leaked out onto the legs but maybe hasn't been there long enough to actually cause corrosion or for whatever reason but I think I've lucked out and it looks like see we've got um, some of the big ones are hundreds 47s I'm seeing uh, 22s couple tins so yeah I mean, it actually looks like this is gonna be fairly decent and I actually have um, already kind of looked into it as far as what caps 
are going to need. And the, the N1 and the N10 have less, I think. There's only half as many in these as the, as the S10s. There's like 81 in the S10, I think, or the S1. Whichever one, probably the same. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave that open. I don't believe there is actually... Um, I was going to say, I don't, I don't think there's another board below this or any components on the bottom, but I sure do want to check. I can also do a power to ground short test. Almost take opposite legs of a kind of a dip chip. Let's see if I go to a negative side of a cap here. I should see negative here. I do, and then positive here, and I do. So there is not a five volt to ground short yet, anyway. It looks like we got there in time. Let's see if I can get this thing more apart. Looks like we got about four screws holding the faceplate on. But I'm kind of wondering also if maybe the board wouldn't slide out the back if I took those two off. This is definitely my first time taking one apart. I don't really remember reading anything about how to do it. Seems pretty obvious. It's sure acting like it should slide out. What am I stuck on here? So the screws on the back connector are fine thread and different than the ones that were up here. Looks like there is a chip right below that one on the bottom side of the board that's actually catching on that mount tab. So maybe we'll just uh, Go ahead and try to remove the face plate. I guess it'll slide out of the way. There's that chip was catching, keeping me from pulling out the back. There is definitely a ton of components on the bottom, but the I don't see any um Electrolytic caps on the bottom, so that's good. Cool. Very happy about that. So, now I want to look at an S10. Okay, so there's an S10. It looks like it's going to be the exact same strategy for taking it apart. There should tell you why there's more caps already. There's a whole extra board. It seems sometimes like I maybe read, I think on maybe Console 5 website, he said something that there might even be a third smaller daughter board. I think it just plugs in right here, so you just gotta basically pry it up. I definitely see some um, corroded cap legs. I'm not sure if the wet spots I'm seeing is just the conformal coating or if it's actual electrolytic fluid. Yeah, 
Yeah, another one of the things they were talking about, and I'm serious about this, they were talking about smelling the the battery. And if it smelled like fish, I think is what they said, then then your battery, battery was leaking. And they even gave a part number to replace that battery with. And yeah. I see a lot of corroded legs. That one's pretty crusty. Let's zoom in here. I was just wiping that leg off. All that crustiness came right off of it. They're just not shiny anymore, which means fluid has leaked down onto the legs and corroded them. Pretty crusty. connector screws and two screws towards the front ports well, this one easily came out the back no problem again a lot of components on the bottom but no electrolytic caps a bit of a bodge Right there. Otherwise it looks good. Let's see. Initial beep is scary, but it's just probably a capacitor discharging or charging, I should say. But it doesn't appear that I have any 5 volt to ground shorting, although it does look like I'm in here, I don't, in here just in time, but I don't actually see any pools of liquid like I did on the N10. But it only takes a little bit. So yeah, definitely one of the other things I'll end up doing after the cap replacement is replacing that battery. I find that interesting though. It just makes me wonder if there's any kind of mod we could do for that. I wonder if that's the same um, EEPROM that you see in the Sega CD. And if maybe we couldn't replace that and have the, uh, you know, the the BIOS upgrade chip or whatever, I can't remember what all it does. I know it makes it region free or something like that. I think it maybe it gets rid of the splash screen. It replaces it. I think we're 
good there too. So I didn't have, well at least this one, didn't have the third sub board. It seems like it, it hung off of this one somewhere. I'm not sure where. But um, Jimmy Choi and Blue BMW on their PC Engine FX thread talk about it. There's a cap chart and stuff like that for... Oh no, it's Console 5 I've seen that subboard, yeah. He has a listing of the caps you need as well. I want to say on the, on the Sega, it was mostly 10s. And yes, I'm seeing a ton of 10 microfarad. And then the bigger ones, we've got 47s. There's 100. 47, 47... It looks like all of the small ones are tens. Yep. There's another hundred. Forty-seven, forty-seven, hundred. But ooh, there's a one. Seemed like there was only a couple of those. That's kind of strange. These two tens right here are also 16 volt, but they're a larger physical size. Yep. Just a bunch of 10 microfarads, but it looks like we're just down to what? Uh, four or five different sizes and I want to say I have all of those hopefully in the right physical size of ceramic but I'm pretty sure I have all those capacitances in ceramic here's my turbo duo box of stuff so I still have quite a bit of through hole caps because there are whatever it is half a dozen through hole caps on the turbo duo for the power supply stuff and then these are the actual storage containers that I got from Kevin that I house the different capacitors in. So there's tens, hundreds. Seems like didn't the uh, seems like the N10, yeah, the or the N1 probably had more 22s than tens. Although I do see. A bunch of tens. So I've got them. 47s. You know, they don't look like much, but that's quite a number of them. And you can just buy these by the reel. I think there was a. Uh, it says quantity 2,941, so maybe it was originally a 3,000. 3,000 quantity reel originally and these are Murata and I want to say maybe my other ones TDK I want to say even some of them hmm I've got bags full of these. I just stored them in the bags. I don't remember how I originally bought them. I don't think they were all on reels. And I don't even think they were originally bought from Mauser. I just used the bag for storage. But maybe some of them were. It's quite possible. It's like those are both 100 microfarads. You know, I've got tons of those. But I want to say the reels, I want to say I got these on eBay. You know, you can buy, you know, people buy a reel and only use a few hundred of them and out of 3,000, you know, buy the rest of them for quite a deal. These are the 22 microfarad ones. So I'll definitely be digging into those whenever I actually get to replacing them. Set those aside for now. 
Well, here's one, and I put a note on it that says, untested, bought as is, so no clue if it actually works, but there's the other sub board, and it looks like it's bodged in with four wires as well. But I also noticed you don't actually need to remove the sub board while it's sitting there. Just unscrew it. Remove the cork, the cart, or the uh, controller connectors. Damn near pulled out of the front face easier. Well, it should be able to walk this out the back. Oh yeah, I forgot about these. Walk it out the back. That'll actually make it easier to take it apart. Like so. Yeah, there's the little sub board. KO sub. This one's called SS7. Man, that thing is dirty looking. And I am seeing a lot of corroded pins on the ICs. Hit the wrong button. A lot of crude pins on ICs and it's not good. See that? It's from electrolytic fluid. It is everywhere. Yeah, that was one of the caps. Uh, I believe there was a cap somewhere under that subboard that's no longer there because of this this addition, but there's an extra one on that board. Again, I'm not really seeing a pool of fluid around any of them. But it does look like damn near every cap has leaked. That might actually be a bunch of corroded traces right there. It's kind of darkened. Am I zooming in too far here? This darkened area right in there. That's a dead giveaway. Corrosion. The solder mask will just flake off, exposing the copper. We'll definitely have to check to make sure those traces are still have good continuity on them. I think it was, uh, might have been blue BMW, might have been somebody else that was talking about throwing these in the dishwasher. And I don't have a dishwasher to do that with, but just um, spraying it down. You know, I spray it down with uh, Purple Cleaner, which is a degreaser. It's pretty rough stuff. And then I scrub it, and then I spray it down with rubbing alcohol. Or I should say, I rinse it with water after doing the Purple Cleaner and scrubbing, and then I spray it down with rubbing alcohol, and then I throw the board in front of the space heater to make sure it's completely dry. But I think blue BMW, or maybe, maybe it's somebody else. Somebody was talking about the electrical fluid getting into the vias and causing problems. Because it will get down into vias and, and separate them, basically. So that they're not connected through to the bottom. 
also kind of a white haze on the top side of that. And I'm just wondering maybe if, I don't know, the electrolytic fluid was, uh, I don't know, evaporated. Yeah, the main board on this one, um, worse than the first one. I mean, what's this crap? It's worse than the first one, and I see, I see a couple, a couple pins corroded by electrolytic fluid on chips, but not nearly as bad as that subboard. Appear to have a pair of ground shorts on this one, luckily. So, definitely a better example of what I shouldn't say can, but will eventually happen if you don't replace these damn things. Now, this one's a bit better example of what you would like to see. Boards are nice and clean, and actually, it doesn't look like there is too much corrosion going on. It felt like electrolytic fluid out of that one, though. Yeah, there's some corroded cap legs. That looks like a puddle of fluid right there, actually. You see that? Very liquidy. It's probably most definitely what that is. surface crusty stuff is. Well I totally missed it but there is still one through hole cap on there and it's a 10 volt 470 microfarad and this is the uh, the clean one I took apart. And there's almost actually no corrosion even on the cap legs showing anywhere. Maybe just a couple. Nothing like that last one, though. 